One thing I do ideally want to do, however, is make sure that we are getting a golden age. I do not want to miss out on a golden age because loyalty wise, I'm, this is going to be a really difficult place to keep all of my cities in the middle of this map. I do not want to run that gauntlet any further than I have to. So yeah, golden age, we've got to think about this. We want to get to 71 points. That is 23 points we need to earn. It's very difficult. It is possible, but we're going to have to do a lot of foresight in order to get this so first of all what we're going to do is we're going to get engineering by putting one turn worth of science into this finishing the ancient wall of my capital i'll unlock aqueducts if i put aqueducts in i probably can get a spectacular industrial zone we're probably going to have enough to do that i can in kyoto i did see that there is a spectacular look at that plus four commercial hub available to me that leaves this space uh for a campus a little bit later I'm going to go and chop that stone, I think, although no, Greece has just sat on it, which is going to be a bit annoying. Let's do this. We might have to do a little bit of chopping to rush this theory, but that is two separate things. Now, what is this harbour going to be a plus four? That will be spectacular as well. That is three points a pop. Can I get to feudalism in time? No. Samurai are going to be impossible to get to. I mean, in theory, there's nine points at stake there. I could, in theory, then, like, Jerusalem, we could levy the military. That would give me some era score. I haven't built a horse yet. I haven't built a swordsman yet. Those are two options as well. We could get a city to flip. That would be even better. But unless Australia knows what's going on and they are putting governors in their cities quite deliberately. Oh, taking over the barb encampment though. That is something that could be a bit useful. Putting a galley out to sea is another thing that we can think of doing. Here's a square. Yeah, and it's going to be a difficult thing to rush through because I haven't really got the population to do that with at the moment. Okay, I think we're just going to let ourselves run for a turn or two and just see how this plays out for us. So the commercial hub has actually gone to eight turns now. That is really, really handy. Yeah, let's levy Jerusalem. I think I'm going to use that swordsman to go over and try and kill this barb encampment. Gives me just one era score doing that. Not a big boost, but a boost nonetheless. I realized that I said I was going to do the aqueduct at the same time as the industrial zone, didn't I? I can't stack both. Not unless I chop them out, which I might be... Oh, and there's not enough woodland here, is there? I think we may have to settle on normal edge, which is not great. I mean, dark... Dark could happen as well, but I feel like I'm going to lose most of my central cities if that happens. Maori wants to be my friend, by the way. Maori. So this is really, really good. Egypt to the only sieve that is not my friend. That's wonderful. What we've done is we've set up a situation where we could go to war with Egypt and basically diplomatically leverage the entire world to join me on that fight. It's, it's a really, really good situation to be in. Here's recorded history though. So natural philosophy can get in and give me a, uh, yeah, seven extra science per turn. I like that. Extra production towards builders campus adjacency and extra production generally traders now i would like to start trading with magnus and i want to improve this city there because this uh, commercial hub will be finished then we've got the government plaza here yeah i want to send all my trade routes to kyoto so i'm going to send this trader from there to start with that's a really good thing to do I'm going to give Pingala grants now because then I'm going to get double great people points and it's the merchant points. Those are the ones I'm really excited about. If I can pick up Marcus Crassus this era, that'll be very handy for me. Look at that trade route already. Two food, two production, two gold, one science, one culture, but that's only going to get better. Just you wait. Oh, Corinth is now beginning to flip. If we can start putting some pressure on these cities in the center, I'm going to be very happy about life. Let's also rush this harbour now. Let's get it done. Oh, that was effective. Yep, okay, that's perfect. Here's the era score for completing the harbour. Amazing. We're also going to get that commercial hub sorted in time. That'll put me to 55 points. I'm just now going to pick up a second galley. That counts as my first boat and also gives me the Eureka of shipbuilding, which is even better. Crassus I'll pick up in that time as well. One more defensive tactics, uh, Governor, that'll be good. We can finish this commercial hub in Kyoto and send uh, my routes from there. But look, Osaka, is he going to... Hang on, no, somewhere can do the market. Right, it's Nagoya can do the market. That's perfect. Okay, guilds is boosted. But what we're going to do is now put a trader in Osaka and get it trading with Kyoto as well. Now, already we can see that Memphis is on the coast and it 
is undefended. That means that going cartography could be fun. A caravel rush of 55 melee strength is a very effective strategy and one that I don't want to discount just yet. Religion is a little bit problematic. Egypt is currently spread to 17 cities and they have converted three people. That is not good, but there are two other religions and I think Greece is going to be looking after their religion fairly well. So I think we should be okay for now, but it's something to keep an eye on. I don't want to let the AI get a religious victory if I can help it. There is the fantastic commercial hub of having plus four adjacency in Kyoto. That means we have got a normal age with one turn left. Ugh, am I a little bit annoyed that we haven't got a golden age? Yes, but getting 14 era score more would probably be a bit of a push right now. I think it's very likely that it is possible, but I'd probably have to do quite a lot of thought in terms of how to get there. But on turn 88, let's just have a quick look through the empire and see where we are right now. I have only two campuses, but they're really good campuses. And between them and Pingala, we have 57 science per turn. I haven't even got libraries or universities in. That will be able to boost my science up to close to 100. But what we're really excited about now is my merchant and engineer point generation. Now, luckily, I have actually managed to pick up this great merchant, which means another classical era merchant will come through. And we picked one that gives us a spare trade route. That's wonderful. You will see that there are three classical era merchants. And the way they work is that you can only unlock them if you generate a new merchant within the classical era. So had we got that merchant next turn in the medieval era, we would have skipped over these two and gone straight to medieval era merchants. It means we've missed out on one merchant, but it's the one that gives us faith and a copy of a luxury resource. It's not the end of the world. It's trade route capacity. That's what we want to go for. That's where all the fun is. The exciting thing as well is that we are in time for medieval era great engineers. Now, Imhotep is first up. This is basically a free wonder. Wonders are really, really, really strong. And I'm thinking a wonder like the mausoleum would be a really good one for us to get as well. In fact, Tokyo could be the city to get that. We'll work that out in a second. Oh, this merchant gives us free tiles and lets us buy things in that are a little far out. So actually I'm going to use it to scoop up some territory around Melbourne and Nagoya. But we're gonna basically go and find where the luxuries are and steal them all. I'm gonna claim that mercury and the iron and then we'll go around and claim that silver as well. So Nagoya is a good place for that. But you will see the industrial zone will finish. And because we have grants in on Pingala, we will start getting two engineer points per turn. I will get the workshop into Tokyo immediately and that'll give me four. Then it's a case of going to humanism at some point and then invention gives us another six you can start getting a huge amount of engineer points. I would like all four of the medieval era great engineers. That's going to be good. And I would also like all four of the medieval merchants. All four are going to be really, really good. But our gold, once we have gone for the workshop in Tokyo, gold is going to be focused on traders from and uh, to Kyoto. I think that's the best thing for us to do here. Engineers are really, really, really important. And Kyoto having a bit of production has got to be a really good thing for us as well. Now, there are a couple of tiles that I can put aqueducts on, but that is a really, really good tile. I think I'd rather just settle for a nice plus four industrial zone. I know the aqueduct could make that a little bit better and we've kind of lost a tile or two around, but it's fine. I plan on taking Corinth and Yokib through loyalty. So that's why I'm not worried about losing the tiles. A lot of people get really, really keen, I guess is the word, to buy tiles around your cities. And if you're going to work them immediately, yes, that's a really good thing. But where you've got Yokib with only one loyalty, that city is going to flip to me at some point and I will get all of those tiles for free. Population in Kyoto is way more important. So I'm going to focus on getting the good industrial zone sorted. We'll finish the audience chamber, then we'll get the industrial zone. One option is to get the diplomatic quarter because all my trade routes will then get an extra food and production and we can get some more envoys at the same time. Like that is not a bad idea. Um, the industrial zone gives me a production, I believe, on internal trade routes. Yeah, it does. So I would be getting an extra food on my trade routes to Kyoto. I could also use it to get myself a little bit of extra science and faith. Honestly, there are very few bad uh, ideas, but I'm going to get industrial zones because I think I would prefer the industrial zone great people points. But we'll we'll see how that goes. Oh, 
Coupe lost their Settler. This is the second Settler we have taken from Coupe this game. Sometimes you just have to roll with the punches and take them when you can. I'm going to pop down on this city immediately and start packing around Tokyo. That, by the way, is a second city from Egypt on the coast that is undefended. That gives me a lot of ideas. I think Buttress has got to be somewhere to go so that we can unlock cartography really quickly. Yeah, what a play. Normal Age. Now, we'll see how bad this is depending on how many people around me get Golden Ages. Everyone else is a Normal Age apart from Egypt. Okay, so we haven't actually lost out here at all. There are still a lot of Eurekas for me to get, so I'm going to do three Inquiry again. I don't, unfortunately, get the science from my commercial sites but you know it's okay we're down to 43 science per turn but it's a really good base it's a really really good base here i'm happy with how this is going we'll check in with the loyalty of the cities oh yeah normal age cities actually press out a little bit better it's weirdly easier to keep your cities if everyone is normal around you than if everyone is golden around you and you're golden as well just a weird way that it works but it does work like that sometimes now loyalty is suddenly a really important thing for these central cities i am not going to sell my luxuries anymore unless i can keep happy happy is like a minimum for me at the moment and that's what we're going to be keeping an eye on world congress i'm not going to go for a diplomatic victory today but it's all about voting with the ones that you want people to go for now people normally vote no on great profit as soon as it pops up so it's always worth doing it and people always vote down on luxury policy b find a luxury we haven't got like gypsum and vote for that it's unlikely we're going to make a difference because i'm getting more value selling my diplomatic favor than i am anything else no profits and no diamonds i do yeah i do have one diamonds okay so unfortunately i am a little less happy than once i was but i can get those dies that makes me a little happier just buy it all in sell the stuff that you can sell so far it's all going good there's the workshop by the way so now we have four engineer points coming in per turn that means i'm gonna get imatep in 20 turns this is a good time for my capital just to get a little bit of infrastructure in there's so many farms around me that need improving so we're gonna go one two builders and then we'll go library monument like that I need Tokyo to grow, I need it to continue growing, and we need to push out. I realise as well, I'm actually not getting any science from Researcher in Pingala. I said I was, but I haven't got that promotion yet. I, I lied through my teeth. So that actually will improve us a little bit better. Look at the 60 gold, and I seize a tile that blocks Australia from getting anywhere near my good central tiles. And the audience chamber springs into existence. Now, Kyoto and Tokyo are getting two amenities and four housing, basically guaranteeing that they can grow continually, which is a lovely thing. It means I can treat myself to Magnus's surplus logistics. This is the one. This gives me an extra food boost to trade routes going to Kyoto. You can see this is now worth four food and three production. And Osaka can now get in on the action, start trading with Kyoto as well. Housing's a bit of a problem. Always work the granaries quickly if housing is a problem and you don't want to work the aqueduct. Corinth has fallen and is going to flip to me in 11 turns. We'll keep an eye on that. I don't need to actually attack it as long as it flips to me naturally. So it's always worth just making sure that it does by just keeping an eye on it. Feudalism, Samurai are good options if I do want to go and take it by force. And you can see there is a man at arms here. It might cause me some problems. Might be worth just picking up Ancient Wars and Nagoya quickly to stop it from being killed. And you can see, look at that, Kyoto. This is a food route now. Four food, three production, four goals, two science, two culture. All of the lovely little routes just to keep Osaka growing nicely. And Pingala now has Researcher as well. Should be worth about 10 science per turn for me. Get to 56. Oh no, to 57. Look at that. Lovely. Here we go. Magnus's original city has been put down. Yokama. I've got an extra food from settling on the cattle there. But I think locking in the production of this aqueduct and getting the trade route out first is probably the easier thing to do. I did block myself in there and stop myself from being able to put a harbour down, which is a bit annoying. I'm going to flip that to a theatre square because what I might do is see if I can make this my mausoleum city like so and put the harbour down on that tile. I think that's not a bad little arrangement for me so we'll, we'll work on that one for now this egyptian warrior is being so annoying it is not moving out the way and i cannot pick up that mercury <laughs> it's doing it deliberately i've had this happen a few times now and it's it's just the most amazingly frustrating thing i might just go instead pick up a couple of tiles for the galapagos islands it, again it's not 
ideal, but that is a lot of extra science and I might as well take advantage of it. There's a settler wandering around as well. I can pick that up. That would be useful. Are they doing that deliberately? Now they've moved out of the way. Just wait and see Australia's borders now expand onto that Mercury tile just to spite me. I do want Yokohama to grow quickly. So I'm going to send a trader actually back to Tokyo. Now, ideally, I'd like to, all of my trade routes to go to Kyoto as soon as possible. But it's this harbour I'd like to get out pretty quick so that I can get the mausoleum up and running. You have to sort of wiggle your assets left and right a little bit just to make sure that everything is going into the right space. Oh, Coupe, you need to stop moving all of these settlers around. They are too tempting. There is the merchant. So that's a classical era merchant. You'll see it now replaced with a medieval merchant. Yeah. So this is what I was saying. We've moved out of the classical era. So Calais has been um, missed, but that that's okay. That just means that the game didn't really get many merchant points beginning of the game, and we'll just have to live with that. Oh, I can trade with Kyoto. It's via the sea, but it's a pretty safe route, actually. So you can see already, yeah, I lose out on a little bit of science and culture, but that's only because we haven't finished the industrial zone in Kyoto yet. I get four food per turn though from that route. That's amazing. Oh, what a route. What a route. What a rush. Here comes cartography. Now I'm going to watch this boost, but I think a caravel rush on Egypt is a really smart idea. And we're just going to do that by getting ourselves a couple of galleys quickly. Treating ourselves not to builders, but to, where is it, maritime industries. Let's pump these galleys out at twice speed. If I can get five or six of them, I should have a big army that I can go and use to take out Egypt really quick. I mean, look, all of their cities, apart from their capital, are on the coast. That means that they are very easily accessible. I'd also quite like to use my merchant in a city that is more likely to be traded with by the AI. So I'm going to pop them into Kyoto. This is going to be my trading hub, ideally. There is also another synergy I could run in this city if I'm quick enough. What I like to call the forbidden synergy. <laughs> the University of Sankor. It's uh, a, quite a good option, actually. All internal routes would give me extra faith and extra science. It stacks really nicely and is something I really shouldn't ignore. Okay, feudalism means that I can now put serfdom in to give myself extra builder charges on um, when I make these things. And Tokyo has got some really nice farms around it now. That'll help me to grow this city out. And as I say, 10 population is what I want to rush towards as fast as possible. Now that I've locked Samurai, gives me a good option a little bit later. I gotta start thinking about which government I want for tier two. Now, monarchy is the quickest to get to and also means that I can start getting housing for walls, which is really helpful when you're trying to grow big cities with lots of districts. Merchant Republic lets you build districts faster and gives you more gold. That actually stacks really nice with my economic play. And Theocracy is all about using faith. I'm going to go Exploration today. Now, Monarchy is always a good option for me. It's always a good option. But I think Exploration has got to be the one for me. So we're going to go Civil Service. Actually, no, we're going to go Theology and then Military Training. That'll unlock two envoys for me that I can use just to pick up Jerusalem again and Vatican. Make sure I've got some suzerains. But yeah, we'll go from there. I'm actually thinking about putting a single trade route from Kyoto as well. That would be pretty handy. Can we also please, Greece, move this warrior off my land? It's so frustrating. I want to put my merchant down and I can't. Might have to make another foreign hub instead. Routes to my cities. Uh, someone's trading to Kyoto, to Kyoto, to Kyoto. I mean, it's got to be this city, but unfortunately, Greece just isn't moving out of my land. That is frustrating. Maybe they'll move in a bit. Who knows? Weirder things have happened. Another route to Kyoto. This time, it actually takes me through Egypt, which is a very alternative route, but okay, that's fine. It's giving me science, culture, and four food and four production. So we'll take it. That's from my capital. Again, these, that, that warrior is just probably, yeah, I can't, I can't afford to wait. So we're going to instead pop it in Osaka. I want the trade route as quick as possible. It's a bit frustrating that, but you know, it's, it's better to not just wait pointlessly there. Turn 100, or oh, normally I'd say 100 science per turn is a really good aim for it if you're going for a science game. So the fact that I'm not, and I'm just going for an economic build here, 82 is pretty good. We've almost got to 200 gold per turn. That is more pleasing to me. I like that a lot. Again, focus your resources where they're going to be more used. Getting this harbor will rush cartography, which will rush the caravels, which means I can attack Egypt. Now you can see they're starting to build walls. 
I don't want to leave this any longer than I already have. So yeah, this is where I want to spend my money. Let's get the builder, chop down these forests, and then we'll go from there. This is a scientist. Now I'm going to pick her up, not because she's very good for me, but because I get the education boost. And the education boost allows me to unlock Sankor. A difficult build for me, but definitely worth it if I can pick them up. Oh, Rockhampton has flipped as well. Oh, here we go. This is why having loyalty in the middle of the map is such a good thing. We're going to start taking over these cities left, right and centre now. Yokohama, 70 production from that job. Okay, yeah, the harbour is almost done now. Next turn we can chop that out and finish off cartography. Lovely. Which city-states are going to declare on me? Ingazagamu will go for me when Egypt turns, as will Venice. Venice is the other side. Venice I've got to not worry about so much. But Ingazagamu is more of a problem. I'm going to put two envoys there quickly and knock Egypt out of it. I do not want that city betraying me. That would be very annoying indeed. Pick up another couple of settlers in Tokyo and expand into this space. This is not really that useful space. This is late game. Once we pick up factories, packing all the cities together, that's the sort of space we're looking at there. In the meantime, it's all fine. Now we've got feudalism, military training's good. I will just pick up civil service to get the alliances quickly. I want the world to gang up on Egypt at the same time. That is the ideal here. Ta-da! Corinth. It's good. Vatican bows to me as well. I think, is that because I just picked up a district? Civic boosted, civil service. I just finished one for Anshan, Leventa, Vatican. Oh, a lot of people I think wanted a theatre square or something similar. But anyway, here's Corinth. It's got two copies of diamonds and one of gypsum. Now, diamonds are not worth anything at the moment because of the World Congress, but that's fine. People will forget about that sooner rather than later. Chop the rainforest down. There we go. There we go. There's the harbour and cartography is now boosted. How long until Imhotep? Uh, 10 turns. That's not too bad, actually. How much gold for an upgrade? 360, unless I get mercenaries first. In which case, it'll be 180. That's what I'm going to choose to do, I think. We have a few land units already. I think Ngarzagamu will help me to get a couple more. In fact, actually, look, they're all there already, including a galley in that sea. It's pretty handy. Yeah, we'll take it. If I can get trebuchets now, nitre, that's all good stuff. Workshop finished in Kyoto. Lovely. Let's pick up a quick water mill in this city and then we can get a next district down. I think it's got to be the campus in order to try and get Sankor as fast as possible. Military engineering has unlocked nitre for me. Now, I don't think I actually have any in my empire at the moment, but we'll just have a quick peek at where it is. In, uh, it's in this sort of uh, little bit of the map that we haven't actually explored into just yet. That's fine. Night is not super important, really. What's more important is things like siege towers and getting archers involved and, and all that sort of stuff. We've got some quad rooms as well to do some damage against the walls to help my caravels out. This aqueduct is finished, which means I can start putting industrial zones down now, which is a nice plus four. Yep, go for that. As much production as possible. We've got a lovely, I think, plus three campus going up there. So that'll be nice as well. Another library has just been built up to 89 science. I'd like to push that above 100 as soon as possible, but at the moment, it's not a bad pace. There we go. Mercenaries unlocked. Right. Now civil service has just finished that quickly. Maritime industry is good. Do I want to get another caravel out quickly? Probably. Let's save up a bit of gold. We'll wait two turns and then I'll switch over. Ooh, my first classical, sorry, medieval era great merchant gained 200 gold and an envoy. Don't mind if I do. Oh, I just need to be careful there, actually. Vatican City, I actually have on my side at the moment, so I'm going to start spreading things if I'm not careful. Two envoys into Bologna. More science from libraries. Perfect. And I can take it over. More great people points as well. Now, Bologna is a fantastic city-state for stacking with industrial zones and markets because it'll give me one extra point for every market and one extra point for every workshop. So it'd be worth two points for Im towards Imhotep and two towards... No, actually, like four towards Irene. I think I've got quite a few markets up and running. Four, I believe. So very much worth keeping an eye on. Oh, this is a terrible campus location, but I could put Sankor there. I guess I will put a district down on this tile, just about whether or not it's worth doing that. That. If I popped it on this tile, then I guess I would get adjacency if I were to build a campus on this tile. Actually, Asaka's going to do it anyway. So do I want to use Kyoto? Yeah, no, I do want to use Kyoto for Sankor. Of course I do. So 
Right, so I think this is probably the tile. Yeah, because we're going to get good adjacency with Nagoya there. Okay, let's let's do that. I've changed my mind. It's not going to be on this tile. It's going to be on this one. Let's get the campus finished. Now, unfortunately, Egypt hasn't denounced anybody, which means I can't use a joint war to attack her. So what we're going to do is we're going to denounce her nice and early so that I can declare a formal joint war with other people. Oh, Osaka is about to get pillaged pretty heavily. I took my eye off the ball there. It's okay, Rockhampton's only going to flip in... It's two turns of a little flip, so that's not too bad. Oh, Sydney and Melbourne are both flipping as well. Yep, all the population we can get in Nagoya and Osaka. We need those up quick. Okay, time to switch over. Let's find professional army. Stick that in immediately. This saves me a bunch of gold, an absolute bunch of gold. First of all, samurai. That is a very strong 50 strength unit. 50? Or is it like 48? 48, yeah. And then we can go for a caravel and a caravel. Exploration boosted as well. Who's going to be the strongest? The Mayans are actually the strongest, so we will open up a military alliance with them. They're not going to want that. They will take a research alliance. Just try changing your alliances around ever so slightly. Sometimes the AI want a particular alliance over another. My coupe doesn't mind a military alliance, so we'll go for one of those. The only one I am not doing is a cultural alliance, because that's the one that, yeah, unfortunately would stop me from spreading to uh, my loyalty. So we've not taken a cultural alliance with anybody, but we've taken other sorts of alliances. So now Egypt has found itself in an unenviable position where I am the only person it doesn't like, and unfortunately I'm allied to everyone else on the map. Yeah, not a place you would like to be, ideally, is it? Um, here's the galley, by the way. We've got that sorted. Let's get this one sorted. That's four caravels. We've got the quadroon that's going to finish in a turn or two. We've got a samurai that is ready to go. And we've got a battering ram to go with it. So this is a pretty decent invasion force. And there is Rockhampton. Our control over the central aspect of this island grows ever more. And Great Barrier Reef is going to give me some lovely adjacency there as well. We had a pretty good holy site. Actually, that holy site would be plus five and would allow us access to using this scientist to give us some extra faith. So you know what? I will build a plus five, but some era score that will do it. Uh, Religion-wise, it'll give me a bit of culture. That's not too bad. The good thing about knocking Cleopatra out of the game, though, is going to be I'm going to remove her and her religion from being able to win a religious victory. Now, luckily for me, Greece is holding its religion really well, and Coupe is doing a good job, although Coupe is a little bit spread around the map and they're not really very effective. The only problem I will find is that I've got a bunch of traders which are going to go through Memphis, which is not ideal. I might find that those get plundered and pillaged a little. Okay, something to bear in mind, something to bear in mind. Oh, Greece is still on that um, commercial hub, by the way. They haven't moved since the point where I pointed it out, so I feel like using the merchant a little early was probably the sensible thing to do there. My gold, now that I've used it to buy an army, I'm actually getting builders for cheap as well. We've got loads of improvements, iron, mercury. I've got some lovely woods to start putting lumber mills on. We've got some really good tiles to put down now. Uh oh tornado outbreak oh dear troops are merely passing by don't worry about it egypt that's fine we don't mind lying to them because we plan on knocking them out of the game so it's fine we're going west okay if that tornado heads west i think i'm going to avoid the worst of that imatep Okay, Imhotep is a really, really, really good wonder builder. 350 production if the wonder is from the ancient or classical era. First thing you want to do is build the mausoleum. If it is available, the mausoleum will give you an additional charge on your great engineers. So Imhotep doesn't lose a charge and you get a free wonder. In, ability, well, in addition to that, we also have science, faith and culture from all coast tiles in that city. Now the city in question is a harbour city. It, We'll have a lighthouse very soon, as soon as I actually remember to do that. Oh, I keep spreading this religion doing that. That's really annoying. Never mind, never mind. It's fine. Oh, I just realized there is a barbarian manor arms there, which is not very nice. Let's move that settler to sea quickly to stop them from being captured. But yeah, suddenly this city is looking rather tasty, especially if I just plonk a lighthouse in it, give it a little bit more housing and to improve those tiles even further. Lovely. Right, you finish this aqueduct and we'll do the campus first, then the aqueduct. No, we'll do the aqueduct first. We need the housing. Oh, how bad was the damage? It looks like it took out another a couple of farms three population lost as well oh 
That's only one of that population was me, I think. I might have taken out another couple in this sort of area, so that's okay, but blimey, that hurt. That was certainly a stinger. And we're in a nice position where we have surplus logistics as well as grants. So Pingala and Magnus are kind of set up now. I'm going to pick up Liang and we're going to start popping extra governors down. Osaka is the first city. This is going to need some housing at some point very soon indeed. Actually Corinth probably needs it as well and there is a bit of a loyalty issue over here. So okay, go to Corinth. And now we go looking for a military ally. Now Coupe technically is my military ally. If I can get a joint war with them, yeah, absolutely you can. Now at this point in the guide if you want to maybe start to exploit a little bit you can always have a look to see how much gold you can add in on a joint war deal because this is still bugged as hell but I tend not to. We're just going to go for a joint standard formal war with Egypt. Diplomatically it's then worth going around everybody else on the map especially because they're my allies and seeing how many of them want to join in on this war. Everyone except Australia. Okay That'll do. Now these Egyptian cities do have just a little bit of defense, but we should be able to do some damage to them pretty quickly. These quadrireams are, well, being absolutely honest with you, they are tributes. We, we are just going to let them attack. The samurai is much stronger. The caravels are going to sit here and just keep an eye on things as well. And I have these ones to go and attack Memphis. That city will fall very, very quickly. Now, ideally, I'd like to be able to take over both cities at the same time. It's quite a difficult ask, that one, but you never know. I'm going to use one of my Imhotep charges on the Apadana. This is a really, really fun wonder to have in your capital. It has a couple of slots for great works of art, which is good, but it also gives you more envoys when you build it. Speaking of great works, always worth keeping an eye out for great works of writing. A lot of the time people sell them very, very cheaply. Always worth just keeping an eye out for a good deal. There's exploration. We can get our second level government pretty soon. Now this is a bit of a suicide attack, but I'm going to be attacking with my samurai from the sea. Now it's likely that they will get killed, which is a little unfortunate, but what I've done now is lowered the walls of the city to a point where my caravels can start to attack manually. Speaking of, there is Memphis. We'll take that city. It looks like it's going to be quite difficult to hold on to. Oh no, 10 turns of being able to hold on to that. That's actually better than I hoped it would be, so we'll keep an eye on that one for now. Yeah, the samurai died, but actually that's pretty okay because we've got a good attacking point to take that city. There's the Apadana. So, as mentioned before, two envoys whenever I build a wonder in my capital city. Trust me, my capital city will be seeing a lot of wonder production very soon. We want to do a lot of it. Speaking of where do I want to put my envoys? One in Ngazagamu and one in Bologna. Both of those city-states will join my side. All the while we are continuing to caravel attack this city which is actually quite easy when you have this many caravels. Okay yeah I'm hoping next turn we should be able to take that city now. Here is a sprawling empire. I would always recommend settling a city after you've been at war for a little while because you tend to pick up that era score for three. It's a very handy thing to have. Well, let's test the theory. Can we take the city? That first caravel attack does a decent chunk of damage. Oh no, we're going to be able to knock the walls down to almost zero health. But alas, not quite to be. Oh, well, they are counterattacking hard, but it is not going to be enough for them because I have just taken the second city. Hoping Memphis is going to be loyal. Yes, it certainly is now. And only minus two on that city means that we are looking at a very easy hold in this direction. Now, Egypt have unfortunately strengthened their cities a little bit, but I think Samurai would probably be tough enough as long as we can get enough iron into our empire. Oh yeah, iron is cheap. It's very cheap. Okay. That's good. Let's start buying a couple of reinforcements, I think. Now these units will be able to escort this battering ram and we can hopefully go and take the capital. That's the biggest population hub here. When you take over a city, I'd always recommend fixing the stuff that's broken, but getting ancient walls up pretty quick is never normally a bad thing as well, because then at least you can protect the city from attacks. Caravels give 53 defensive strength though, which is pretty tough, so tends not to be too much of an issue. And there is exploration. Switch over, better government, 
and we immediately, I mean, Professional Army is useful, but we don't need that right now. We'll put Republican Legacy in to give the extra housing and amenities from all of our cities. We like that. Now, Colonial Offices is really, really handy uh, as a card. You can get faster city growth as long as your city in question is not on the same continent as your capital. I, I like this, but the three extra loyalty per turn, it helps with domination and it helps on a very crowded map where you want to keep hold of your cities. So both of those things are good for me. Let's put in press gangs and hope that we can find ourselves some nitre very soon. Oh, there is some there. Lovely. And I can use to go and build some frigates. Irene of Athens. Oh, yes. Perfect. That is another beautiful, great person. And I can use her to give myself a governor. And let's put in Victor into my new city. Next up, in my capital, I want to build Kilwa. Now, Kilwa is going to give me 30% extra science in my capital, and this is where Pingala is. I've already got a university built here. We're getting 53 of our 135 science from this one city. Let me tell you, Kilwa is worth it. It is always worth it, and it means we're going to have a lovely theatre square spot there as well. So we'll have two brilliant theatre squares between Yokohama and Tokyo. That'll give me a good chunk of culture. Half of the trick to Japan is making sure you have one trade route from each city going into your trading hub. Now Kyoto is the one giving me all of these delicious yields. Five food, four production, eight gold, four science, four culture. So you basically go through your city list and go, where is sending a route? Tokyo is, Yokohama is, Fukuoka, Sendai is not. So that is a city that needs one. So we'll go and put one there. Sydney's flipping and Melbourne is about to flip as well. Oh my goodness, it's all coming on Ursa. Look at this. Beautiful. I tell you what, it really is frustrating when the AI just sits in your land. This is a great general and it hasn't moved in like five turns. It's fine. It's fine. Oh, I just, it's because I've got alliances up, there's nothing I can do about it. I can wait until the alliance expires, it'll kick all the units out and we can reset, but honestly. When you plan to attack a city, you'll notice that it's got plus six combat strength from districts. Something you want to be a little bit careful of. That's the harbour. The harbour is giving two of that strength. So while my caravel is here, I will just treat myself to a little bit of pillaging. A, it's gold for me, which is a lovely thing. But B, I'm actually making the combat easier for my other units. So that's also a thing in itself. This is where the economic build really starts to pay off because you're basically making sure that all of your cities have lovely traders able to spread into your nation. Every time I put one out, it's food, production, gold, science, and culture that hits my empire. I have no theater square districts apart from the one I took in Corinth, and that one is giving me one, yeah, one culture per turn at the moment, and that's all spread around from my trader. It's mass production boosted by the um, lumber mill that I've just put in. We're getting square rigging, and then it's on to industrialization. You want to be rushing this as quick as you can, because if you Electronics Factory is the unique building of Japan, which is brilliant in itself. But mainly it's coal power plants. That is a massive spike in production. And I'll show you why in a little bit once we get there. The city center and the encampments are doing about 19 damage to my caravels at the moment. That's no fun. Can we produce units quicker? And please, can my melee troops be stronger? Because my samurai are waiting to have a little bit of fun here. Yep. And oh, gold purchasing is cheaper. That is just as helpful for me because I've been gold purchasing these samurai. 320 gold now. Yep, okay, we basically can just buy an army whilst we're here now, which is pretty awesome, especially because I'm just pillaging it from Egypt. Now, I really, really want to get the, what's the guild card? Craftsman. This is what I want to put in. This is nine additional uh, production across my empire from my industrial zones. Now, I'm not really building many boats at the moment, and this is much more generically useful production. Like, I'm going to get a plus six from that district. I've got plus five in my capital. I've got plus four in Kyoto. I've got another plus four being built over there. It's all lovely. Thank you for leaving this crossbow out of your city though. That's very kind of you. This time I'll get Rainer in. Again, we're just spreading the love around all of the cities that need a little bit of housing. They can get themselves another governor, Yokohama. That could do with a governor, so in they go. And humanism, I want to get invention and I want it as quick as possible. So what I've done is as quickly as possible, I have put this city under siege. As soon as it's under siege, you can basically guarantee that it can't heal itself if you start doing damage. Now, the ability to put it under siege is basically the six tiles surrounding the city you need to put under zone of control. Melee units do a zone of control of the tile they're stood on and then all the tiles around them as well. So this one is providing a zone of control 
on Stonehenge and the Sphinx. This one is doing the Sphinx and the Aqueduct, as well as the towel it stood on, and this one is also doing the Aqueduct as well. So between us, we have it sorted. I'm also going to just pillage a bit of health for me. Thank you. Oh, we should be able to take this city very, very soon. Now, this samurai keeps getting hit by all of the crossbows and city defenses and all the sort of nasty stuff. So I'm going to give it tortoise as an upgrade. Makes it very hard to hit. And in the meantime, my other samurai are now starting to do damage to the capital. That'll fall very soon. I believe as well, Osaka can now get itself an arena. That's useful. I just need a little bit more gold now. I think that's enough. Yes, it is. Perfect. Now I can flip this around and quickly put in the Colosseum. Now the Colosseum on this tile is going to hit every single city in the center of this map. So I absolutely am going to rush it with Imatap. Now Imatap gives 350 production. Luckily there's quite a lot of production in that city as it is already. So it doesn't need a huge amount more, but Look at that, beautiful. Although again, I keep spreading this religion. It's a bit of a pain, I need to stop doing that. One attack, two attacks, three attacks, and the capital is taken, and divine right is mine. Perfect, Egypt has just the two cities left that we can see. We will now move in on those. My samurai are gonna have to hit hard and they're gonna have to hit repeatedly, but we can get through this city if we try. Keeping these units alive for the long run of the game, yeah, not a super important thing for me. I just want to do well and I just wanna take this city as fast as I can. Oh, there's the next engineer, which is wonderful. And did you see, that's a really good scientist, this one. This one gives you a, it says 40%. It actually means 20%. It's a 20% boost to all non-food yield uh, abilities if your cities are ecstatic. You don't get any benefit from them beginning of the game, but later in the game, oh yeah, they're really good. When you're playing the economic build, just get those commercial hubs down. It's all about the traders. Traders, 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 traders. You want them as quickly as you can. Colosseum, two culture, two loyalty, two amenities to all cities within six tiles of it. As I mentioned before, this is every city within the center of the continent. The Colosseum is a really good wonder to focus on if you want to make sure a lot of your cities are happy for a long period of the game. Oh yeah, including Kyoto, very happy city now. In fact, a bunch of cities are gonna be happy. There's Sydney flipping to me as well. Let's get some builders in here. I need a lot of builders around this location. Oh, and a merchant increases trader capacity by one. Trader to city-states giving faith is not an important element of that at all. We just want an extra trader. And there we go. Rockhampton has got its own trade route now. Just making sure that every city has one. Remember I said I wasn't very precious about my units? I wasn't lying. There you go, look, just <laughs> because that one died, I could move another one right behind it. So yeah. I, I'm being deadly serious here. Oh, that holy site is finished as well, which means I get extra faith as well as some science in this city. 173 by turn 127. This game is evolving nicely, progressing at a pace that I'm happy with at the moment. Samurai attacks once and gets killed, and then the next two will come in and take their place. Oh, that is really close now. Oh. We've almost got that city. Almost got it. Here you go. University of Sankor. It's being built. It's actually a very good wonder for this particular build of Japan, and I can't deny it. So, yeah, build it we will. Renaissance era. This is when the game begins to get a little bit exciting because I've also just hit industrialization, so we can get electronics factories super quickly. My golden age, I would love it if I could do something that gives me more infrastructure. And I think for me, monumentality is going to be the thing. I have 60 faith coming in per turn and the ability to get builders in. I mean, that in itself is an amazing thing. You can see a builder is 140 faith. I'm just going to keep printing them in Corinth. Now, Corinth is generating a beautiful six charge builder for me at the moment. That's what we want to be doing with our life. That's awesome. You can see we've got a bunch of coal that's spawned in or around our empire. Now, current, that would be amazing if I could put something onto that, but there's a heavy chariot in the way. I get the feeling we know exactly how that's going to go. There's a campus on that one. That one is to be improved. There's another one to be improved there. Yeah, this map does not have a shortage of coal if you're in the center of the map. My gold, however, is being beelined and funneled into this war. Whilst I can print samurai cheaply, I'm doing it, and it's worth just making sure your resources get put in 
So the really useful things of um, the game, and at the moment, finishing this war with Egypt, that is the most useful thing I can be doing in this stage of the game. Only one city left now. Only one city left, and yeah, these are reinforcements. We are sending them very nicely indeed. Here's the scientist, chosen campus, grants two housing and one amenity. That is going straight into Tokyo. And finally, a very special shout out goes to Glorious Petra, I am Salty Tech, Matthew Wilkinson, Paul Coffey, Doughboy91, Seancrates, Portland, Scott Stratton, Major King Kong, Davalex, Skeptical Bear, Kroger Brand Trail Mix, Alex Noob, Cinnamon Beard, Petra Ryan, Matthew Hatch, Amiri C, Henry, Rom88, Radiatore, Private Selection, Genoa Salami, Boy Zorro, Callum Billy, Garrett Gowan, Polar Bear Ray, El Truand, Creston, RB Hedge, Mushkin Mandeltort, Esri Dax. Thank you for all of your support. Cheers!